Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of European markets. Uh, the uh, Monday, the uh, 14th of March, 2016, end of day. Be sure to visit CFDs.com, your specialist in spread betting and CFD brokerage, and you can certainly earn up to 25% cash bonus. Also visit the website uh, for educational uh, purposes, which is www.cfds.education. Certainly learn more in terms of uh, market analysis. Okay, now uh, this video is uh, for Monday's trading end of day analysis for Monday, the uh, 14th of March 2016. Let's try and decide for exactly as to uh, what happened over the last uh, 12 hours and uh, as to why the markets were certainly went higher. Now, in a nutshell, it was the misunderstood well, not misunderstanding, but the understanding was certainly correct from my fundamental point of view, given my European video analysis stated that we were going lower. I expected the oil price to move lower, but that's, ex that's exactly what occurred, folks. Okay, if I bring up the uh, analysis of, uh, or bring up a chart of crude oil, you can see the crude oil has certainly fallen on a 10-minute chart, 60-minute chart, you'll certainly appreciate it better as well. My analysis was for oil to certainly fall, that's exactly what occurred, okay, given the Iranian uh, have stated, the Iranians have stated that well, they want to reach 4 million barrels per day. In terms of production, they're currently sitting at 1.75. So there goes the uh, oil output freeze idea or concept out the window. Okay, now although we've had um, an OPEC report today and it certainly is bearish, not overall, but uh, there are a lot of um, um, uh, points within that uh, report itself. Uh, for example, cuts 2016 demand forecast for its crude, leaves 2016 world oil demand forecast unchanged. Okay, a forecast that not, not supply will decline, etc. etc. So there are some uh, arguments for the markets to or for oil to certainly appreciate, and there are other arguments for it to depreciate. Uh, now, be bear in mind that uh, the uh, dollar certainly has uh, pushed higher as well. So I stated that the dollar index would certainly push higher, and that would cause the Aussie and Kiwi to fall, and that's exactly what's occurred. So that aspect of it certainly uh, certainly uh, played out as well. Okay, so if I uh, bring up this uh, chart, you can see the dollar index certainly has held at the bottom and certainly is bouncing from there. And given the fact that the daily chart obviously has gap fill support, and we've bounced ever since, okay? So we had weaker Chinese data. Again, that's going to be negative for oil, uh, given the demand side of the equation. Uh, so retail sales missed, but industrial production missed. Okay, also money uh, money supply certainly uh, certainly weak as well, and, and loans certainly at fifty percent of what they were previously. So again, the credit side of the equation certainly uh, being squeezed, and that's generally considered to be negative for the market. So now that was negated by what? Okay, that's the question we need to ask ourselves. This is something that I misread as well. Okay. The biggest macro development over the weekend was China's latest gloomy economic update in which industrial production, retail sales and lending figures all missed estimates, hence the reason why I had a bearish bias. Okay. However, now that we are back to central bank bailout mode, bad news is once again good news and the Shanghai comp soared 1.7%, although towards the close it did actually uh, finish weak. Among the best performers in Asia on calls for further central bank stimulus, uh, while the new CSRC chief also vowed to intervene in stock markets if necessary okay so this uh shall we say um put uh or intervention put by the csrc chief okay certainly helped uh the asian markets rally and that's what triggered off a short squeeze in europe in the morning even though we had weak chinese data and that's generally considered to be weak for uh, german growth going forward also given the fact that the euro usd was above 1.11 and that's considered to be negative because a higher euro is certainly negative, given the fact that the uh, uh, Mr. Draghi vowed that there will be no more rate cuts going forward. Again, that's negative. And also given the fact that uh, we had the uh, concept uh, of uh, uh, Miss uh, Merkel losing in the elections and uh, losing two seats to this anti-immigration party. So again, it certainly uh, creates this uh, uh, uncertainty and fear and markets hate uncertainty and fear. And therefore, the markets were expected to move lower. Okay, so now that we've established that the dollar index is certainly into support and certainly moving higher, given the fact that the Fed is on Wednesday, BOJ expected to do nothing, whilst the Fed is expected to be overtly hawkish, okay? Especially given the fact that oil is stabilised now, markets are stabilised, uh, QE certainly has kicked in, and the ECB has certainly to help the, uh, the, the, uh, the US or the Fed's decision to potentially, obviously, uh, lift rates now, given the fact that... Uh, Given the fact that the ECB has stated that uh, they no longer see uh, any further rate cuts or their rate cutting cycle has ended, that generally means that they are relying upon the uh, Fed now to start raising rates, and that in itself will be QE. Okay? That's the way in which I'm interpreting it.
Right, okay. Uh, let's not go too, too deep into fundamentals. Okay, so let's look at the market now from a, from a, uh, from a technical point of view. Given the fact that, yes, we did have some uh, bullish data today with regards to industrial production out in the Eurozone and, and some positive uh, murmurings on Greece with a potential dream deal being struck. Now, let's see exactly how this market will respond and how it reacts. Okay, so daily chart of the Eurostox is a topping tail. Now, I am actually short. I'll just declare that I am actually short. And I'll just confirm this. I am short Eurostox at this juncture expecting lower prices so whether or not my analysis is biased it's up to you okay and i'll explain my setup as well you have a topping tail which has held okay and uh, that was a topping tail post ecb uh obviously rate decision etc etc given the fact that initially the markets rallied and then they sold off as you can see the topping tail there and that topping tail will is expected to hold given the fact that there's no additional rate cuts coming okay so it was interpreted as hawkish and the euro usd obviously fell on mass okay so how do we interpret the market now? Good question. Right, just bear with me one second whilst I just uh, open up a position. I just need to check something quickly. Here we go. The euro certainly seems to be falling at the moment. Okay, right. Let's see. Okay, interesting scenario, right? Okay. Interesting, interesting scenario, right? Okay, so, uh, right, uh, let's get back onto the markets. Okay, so, yes, topping tail on the euro uh, stocks. Now, let's just cross reference that with the euro SP 350. Topping tail, previous support equals resistance. Cross reference that with the stock 600 again. Uh, the daily chart, we'll go to the daily chart, and you can see the topping tail is held. Previous support equals resistance. So, therefore, looking for weakness on the uh, stocks 600. Now, going over to a smaller time frame, 60 minute chart, you can see that double top certainly has held, and you are looking for potential weakness now. 10 minute chart, you're looking for one fill gap to close below, and that's at 3074. So, that will be a target on the euro stocks, in my perspective. If you do potentially push lower, then you are looking at support just below. Uh, currently residing at the 3050 zone, so all eyes on that zone for potential support. Overfill gap remains as well at 29.70, so we're certainly not out of the woods to a large extent. Okay, bear that in mind. Now, uh, your stock setup is bearish. Let's just cross reference that with the German DAX. German DAX sideways, okay, unfill gap below. From my perspective, that gap should certainly close immediately, especially given the fact that uh, we have um, a bearish bias. Uh, on from in regards to political uncertainty for Miss Merkel's per, obviously uh, uh, failure to uh, secure the seats and or she actually lost two seats to the anti-immigration party. So 60 minute chart you have this di diagonal trend line that certainly has held you had a topping tail on the 60 minute chart and you are looking for that uh, gap goes two gaps to close below. Topping tail certainly more or less held uh, you were putting a doji still holding that gap fill resistance so that should be interesting going forward. Now you have previous support equals resistance here so if you do push higher you have resistance at 10 120 and then 10 220 on the German DAX. Let's just cross reference the German DAX and the MDAX 50. MDAX 50 is still into that slammed up bang into that to 200 MA. Certainly is holding that resistance in that gap fill zone. So, therefore, looking for resistance on the get on the MDAX tech core share as well. From my perspective, is into resistance. You've had gap fill uh, resistance here. If, obviously, if you do push higher, then you have horizontal resistance just above. We can use a diagonal trend line uh, if we take the pivot high from here. And if we connect it across, then you are looking at resistance if we do continue to push higher. So certainly take that into consideration, okay? Righty then, okay, so let's look at the CAC now, uh, the CAC 40. Uh, 10 minute chart, you have gap fill, uh, certainly has held all day on the French CAC. Very impressive, although you have seen weakness on the CAC, given the fact that if you convert, compare the CAC's performance to the German DAX, you can certainly see there's uh, certainly a lag there, okay, uh, in terms of uh, movements higher. 60 minute chart again, we held that fib 75%. So, if any index is going to fall, it will be the German, French cap from my perspective, okay. The daily chart, okay, you have a topping tail, uh, topping tail on the uh, the actual uh, CAC itself, and that certainly has held. You have unfilled gaps below, and therefore, this CAC is uh, certainly your French CAC is certainly vulnerable to other markets to. Uh, Certainly move lower from my perspective, okay? Uh, especially given the fact that Euro USD now is con potentially coming into support. If I bring up the chart, the Euro USD, you can see the daily chart certainly has this bull flag formation, so I'm certainly expecting that to uh, 
to hold to a large extent okay although it has held at fib 75 percent 60 minute in the chart now coming into support on the euro usd and therefore you are looking at risk off if i bring up the chart of the euro buns again remember watch the buns folks it's very important the euro buns as you can see is selling off okay certainly weak from my perspective certainly pushing lower and that should obviously start to uh, ignite the uh, euro uh, higher and therefore trigger a risk aversion in the markets okay like i said uh, it's all about uh, boj tomorrow uncertainty fed on wednesday uncertainty certainly is a risk off tone from my perspective okay FTSE 100 uh, daily chart still into that uh, resistance zone hell holding that uh, red candle uh, the zone here at uh, 6200 certainly is hell holding up really well uh, in terms of resistance 10 minute chart on the FTSE now I'll just declare folks I am actually short the FTSE I'm uh, my short FTSE short is uh, currently at 61 from 6171 I'm looking for lower prices okay so I'm looking for potential 6150 uh, potential touch you have this diagonal trend line as well so 6150 will be support on the uh, in the uh, in the interim on this uh, index itself although you do have support at 6154 so looking for 6150 6154 on the FTSE 100 from my perspective okay right uh, the uh, 60 minute chart we, we can bring that up for you as well you had a topping tail diagonal trend line resistance bear flag formation looking for potentially lower prices okay so the FTSE certainly is holding up well although the OPEC report today was certainly bearish and uh, from my perspective uh, certainly bearish and also given the fact that the Iranian news of them not joining the free or, or oil output per freeze Again, that's certainly bearish as well. Okay, so those two are those two arguments together certainly bearish. Also, adding the fact that uh, the S and P 500 on a daily chart perspective is holding that 200 MA resistance. Markets failing to push higher given the uncertainty from BOJ and the Fed. It's very unlikely for this market to continue to move higher. Okay, the Nasdaq as well certainly has pushed higher today this morning. It certainly seems to be exhausted now. If I bring up the terminate chart, I'll be able to show you, and you can see here a flush has occurred. Although you do have potential support at 4360, you should see lower prices on the NASDAQ going into uh, obviously the BOJ tomorrow. So certainly a risk off tone. And like I said, the oil price certainly is under pressure regardless. Okay, right. So certainly looking for lower prices in terms of uh, the European indices in the next 24 hours. And watch the Euro USD as it is into support. Uh, the uh, but with bonds certainly remain bearish. Obviously, lower bonds, higher yields. And that will mean a higher euro as well. Okay, and that uh, higher euro is negative for exports and negative for the eurozone uh, as a whole. So the reliance will be now on the Fed. Uh, the BOJ is expected to remain uh, stagnant, not, nothing extra from the BOJ. But all eyes will now be on the Fed. And uh, if the Fed isn't as hawkish, and obviously this is one of the reasons why Mr. Draghi, I mean, they're not clever, these central banks, they know exactly what they're doing. One of the reasons why Mr. Draghi obviously was. Uh, are hawkish and not as dovish as everybody expected is because of the uh, reliance on uh, the Fed to uh, hike rates which in turn is a stimulus package for the euro zone because it will force your USD lower okay right that's uh, I think that's a market wrap now be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs goodbye now